Ryan P. Wilson here. We're gonna look at rendering the Piranaconda, or more specifically, how the muscles and the skin deformations are done. So let's say this is a render file that I got back from the animation. I just need to turn off the animation path, turn off the ground visibility, make sure that this is unchecked so it's ready for render, copy all these nodes, open up my render template file, and paste them in and it automatically links into all of the render geometry. The only thing we have to do is set up the camera. To do that, I have a shelf tool I've written. It's in Python, just hit link camera, select the camera for the shot, hit enter, and it will link all of the translation and transformation and uh, lens settings into our render camera. So now we can just hide that. Now, to get him to conform to the ground, all we have to do is click on the Piranaconda render node and click show wrinkles and muscles. And there we go. Now he's perfectly conformed to the ground. You can see, uh, I'll turn it on and off and you'll see the difference. It's easiest to see the deformations with textures turned off. So I'll turn off display textures. And then you can see some of those muscles right there. Some of the wrinkles. You can see that thick muscle along his back. I'll just do a quick play blast here. Actually a flip book as Houdini calls it. Show you what it looks like. Okay, so I did a preview and here you go. You can see the muscles and deformation working. I have the muscles and wrinkles exaggerated a little bit just so you can see them. So now I'll show you how to add in uh, further deformations. For example, if it was a tree or another object in the scene. Okay, so to put in extra collision geometry, I'll use a sphere for this example. You just move it where you want it. So let's say it's gonna collide with him right here. Push into his side. All you have to do is rename it Collider 1 and it'll calculate in. There you go. So you can see it's perfectly deforming him. His skin and muscles are bulging around it. I'll hide that so you can see it better. There, that's what it looks like. Now let's dive into the network and see how all this is done. I have a shot here. It's actually shot 13 in Piranaconda, and he comes out of the water and snakes between some trees. So you can see that's what we have here. Here's where the water would be. He comes up on the land, goes between some trees, and you can see the muscle deformations happening around the trees, on the ground, so we'll show how we did that. That all happens at SOP level in the Piranaconda node. Right to the top. First thing that happens is we bring in the base mesh. And that is just the base mesh after we sculpted. There's a head UV group on that. Body UV group. And that's used because we broke up the UV texture maps into various groups. Wrinkle attribute, paint that on because we don't want wrinkles happening on his head. And we do the same thing for the deformation. This controls uh, where the uh, collision objects will affect. So it doesn't affect his tail fin and it doesn't affect his uh, jaw, head, and neck. And we measure the polygon area from the rest geometry. And this is an actual measure of the area that each polygon takes up. Now we pull in the deformed version from the rig, copy all of those attributes onto the deformed version, including rest attributes. We set an attribute called back muscles, set it to be zero. Now we take the points down the back here and delete everything except those two strips of points. But a left and a right, we deform that onto the animated version, add a back muscle attribute and set it to one on this one. And then we transfer those attributes by distance onto the deformed version. And now we measure the polygon deformed area using a measure stop again. And we promote the area to point attribute. And here's where we create the back attributes. We take the quotient of the rest area and the deformed area. That gives us a compression ratio. And we export that as smooth bias and bias. 
Then we put down two smooth stops and we smooth the back and we smooth the smooth bias. Then here's where we do the muscles. It's a VOP SOP and you can see the effects of it. I'm going to turn off textures. It's just easier to see. And I'm going to turn on flat shaded. So here's the muscles and let's take a look at how I did that. So we take the rest area and the deform area, which is the bias. And when that's greater than zero, we use the bias. When it's not, we use the smooth bias. That way, when the polygons are stretched, you get this hard ridge. When they're compressed, it pushes in softly like that. And all we do is use a two-way switch to swap between those two, multiply it by the deform attribute we painted, and use a displace node to displace in or out along the point normals. Now we copy a hit attribute, which is generated by pulling in the scene geometry, converting it to a volume, scattering points into the volume, scattering points on the surface, merging those two together, and then we copy the attribute called hit attribute onto the deform mesh by distance. Then we collide the geometry and you can see right there that it's been pushed in wherever it's colliding with anything. Now I'll show you how that's done. We simply do an intersection along the point normal and we intersect with the collision geometry. Now if we have a hit we use the distance from the point to the collision else we use our threshold. Now all we do is mix between the original point position and the position of the collision geometry and pump that back out into the point. And that's what you get. Then we smooth that. So that's what the smooth version looks like. And then we mix it together. So we take the smooth point position and the point position and we mix it based on the hit attribute so that it doesn't smooth it everywhere it only smooths it near where the collisions happen. So we just smooth out some of those sharp edges. Then we do the inflation. So to maintain volume, wherever it was pushed in, around those areas, I add an inflate attribute. I push out along those normals to maintain volume. So we see what happens here. Everywhere in proximity to what was pushed in now gets pushed out so that the creature appears to maintain volume. Then we do the same method we did above. We smooth the entire thing and then we blend between the inflated point and the smooth point based on the hit attribute so that it only smooths the rough areas. Then to do the wrinkles, we measure the deform area once again, promote that to a point and we run that through a wrinkle generator SOP. There you can see some wrinkles forming right there. They're easier to see when they're subdivided, so I'll just put down a subdivision node quickly. Now you can see them there. I'll just turn up the depth on the subdivision to 2. And we'll turn up the wrinkle scale to 0.4. Now let me show you how that's done. Inside the wrinkle VOP, we're taking the rest area and the deform area and we're comparing them to find out if the wrinkles should be in or out. Then we take the rest position and we calculate a noise. And we use that noise to create a wrinkle map. We don't want all of the skin to wrinkle, we only want certain areas to wrinkle. Just as your skin would wrinkle, certain areas are more, more prone to wrinkling uh, just because they've been wrinkled over and over again. So this noise map creates that type of wrinkling effect. And just like we did with the back muscles, uh, we displace along the normals, either in or out, depending on whether the polygon is compressed or if it's stretched. Very simple, but it gives you an extremely nice effect. Then we re-collide everything just to ensure that the wrinkles are fully collided. And uh, we apply the render textures and we have the option of baking out all these muscles for faster playback. And here's where the out render goes. We have that marked with the render node and here we have it marked as display node and the display node just has some different textures on it for viewport purposes. So there you go. Thank you very much for watching.